Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, I know normally it would be a lunch and learn today, and it is not a lunch and learn. We have a new series called Experts Unleashed, and it starts today. It starts right now. I happen to have uh, the author, uh, co-author, Andrea Waltz of the book Go For No in my waiting room right now. She's hanging out in the green room right behind me. But before I do that, I wanted to talk to all of you and tell you why we're doing Experts Unleashed and what this is all about. Listen, you know, as a company, we stand for the entrepreneur. Uh, we stand in the corner with the entrepreneur, with the business owner. And we, we really just love them. We want to help them in any way we can. Clearly, we have a platform called Mailbox Power that does a great job of helping them acquire new customers and, make, and get a great relationship or create a great relationship with their existing customer base where they actually get referrals. But that's Mailbox Power, right? Let's talk about Experts Unleashed and how we're going to feed you in another way. Uh, we've decided that this Experts Unleashed, uh, we're going to bring you experts. So we're going to unleash them upon you and let them educate you uh, in these specific uh, areas of expertise that they have. And today, uh, I am proud uh, to present to you um, Andrea Waltz. And Andrea uh, happens to be uh, the author, co-author of Go For No. Uh, I mean, um, millions of books sold, uh, been on screen and on stages all over the world. Uh, and I'm proud to present her to you today. Andrea, how are you today? Joe, I am so excited to be here to talk to everybody about the power of the word now. Uh, yes. Um, and um, this is a little strange, folks. So just in case you didn't know, yeah, but the word no is like a really, really big deal to Andrea um, and actually getting no. And even I even heard the words like celebrating the word no. Um, I, I didn't, you know, I, I'm going to learn today as well, Andrea, and I'm looking forward to it. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yes, we are going to be talking about the word no. Um, so what I, what I do for a living, what I wake up every day thinking about is how to help people reprogram the way they think about failure, rejection, and the word no to be more successful in their business. So what does it look like in your business when you're struggling with rejection? Uh, well, I'll tell you a couple of things. This is what I've seen over the years. I've been doing this now for 20 years, talking about just this topic. I have no, there's no degree in it, um, although I feel like I have a master's degree in it. I have a bachelor's of science in criminal justice, totally different. Haven't used that for any, any reason whatsoever. Um, but I wake up in the morning, passionate about this because I know that fear of rejection holds entrepreneurs and business people back. And what it looks like in your business when you're experiencing this is you hold back from reaching out to people. Um, you maybe prejudge or make assumptions about what somebody is going to decide, what they're going to do, what they're going to spend. You think, oh, they're just going to say no to me. So why should I ask? I'm not going to reach out to this person. Why should I follow up with this person again? They're just going to tell me no. And I see this over and over and over again with business owners of every shape and every size. Rejection holds people back. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if no could be the most empowering word in the world? What if those two letters were the difference between failure and success? Well, I am here to tell you that they are, but I have to ask your permission uh, for a few things. Here's what I need from you. There are three traits that I have found that are required, really required for change. And this really goes to your uh, intention for what you'd like to get out of this training today. I mean, here we are. I'm super excited to be the first expert on this Expert Unleashed program. So let me unleash these three ideas on you because these ideas are the ideas that will help you for every training going forward. And the first is open-mindedness. Now, I will tell you that there are a lot of people that they see the phrase go for no and they think, go for no. Why would I want to go for no? I want to go for yes. I want more yeses in my business. I want more sales. I want more yeses in your life. 
Absolutely. But I'm here to tell you that yes is the destination, but no is how you get there. So we're going to talk about that. So I do need you, though, to be open minded to this concept, because I know it's if you haven't heard it before, if you ha if you're not familiar with the book, it may seem really weird and kind of foreign to you. The second thing is honesty. And that really means self-awareness. Now, I'm going to tell you a story in just a couple minutes about how I was completely unaware that I was really um, completely afraid of rejection, hated the word no, and wanted nothing to do with go for no when I first heard about it. So honesty, number two, we'll talk about that. And then the third thing is willingness. And that's a willingness to try new things and new ideas. And you can see this is one of my favorite little cartoons. There's these little cavemen guys, right? And there's the one caveman and he's holding up what looks to be a couple wheels and then the other cavemen are dragging this box of rocks and they've got a square for a wheel and they're like no thanks they don't they don't want to see the wheel they're, they're too busy dragging this box that has these square wheels so i'm sure that was very difficult that's sometimes what happens to us, right? We're so busy in our day-to-day -day lives. We're just, we're trying to, to put out fires and we're trying to get stuff done. And then this idea or two comes along and it's like, we don't, we don't have time to think about that. We don't have time to do that. We're just too busy. But this could be the wheel. And by that, I mean, this could really unleash a whole new way of thinking and feeling for you that could change everything. So hopefully you're on board with me. Open-mindedness, honesty, willingness, let's continue. I have to tell you how I first learned of this go for no concept. I was getting my degree, my bachelor of science degree in criminal justice. I was simultaneously working full-time at a company called Lens Crafters. And I got my degree in criminal justice and I, I wanted to be a crime scene investigator. Now this was, this was pre-CSI, before it was really even a thing. I wanted to catch bad people. I wanted to catch bad guys. I wanted to solve crimes. But as it turned out, the sheriff's department told me, you know, we really don't have a lot of jobs. But lens crafters in the meantime, where I was working while going to school was like, we'll promote you. We'll move you up into management. So I said yes to that. Uh, over a, the period of a couple years, I quickly worked my way up to general manager. And as a general store manager, I was running a $3 million location. I was running the retail side of the business. And I was also responsible for the lab side where we manufactured the glasses. And I had also gotten deep into training. I was doing two days a month of our sales, customer service, orientation, management training, things of that nature. And I loved the training uh, environment in our company, and they really invested a lot into training. So one day, I'm working at Lens Crafters. I'm a, I'm managing the store, and one of our top trainers comes in, and this is my now husband. So <laughs> you can you can tell we we did meet on the job. We met at work, which is a story that we don't even have time for. We'll have to do that later offline. I'll tell you guys that story. But he comes in one day to visit the store, and we're standing there on the sales floor, and Richard proceeds to tell me this story of how he changed his mind when it came to the word no. It's a story that we have in our book. A lot of people don't know. It actually is a story that happened to him. And he proceeds to tell me how he was completely failing as a salesman in a men's clothing store. He, Richard was selling uh, cars with his father in Chicago. He was failing miserably. He left the car business. He wanted to get out of his father's sales legend's shadow. So he moved all the way to Los Angeles and he took a job selling suits for a living. And he was failing and he was pretty sure that they were going to fire him. Uh, and as it turned out, the district manager, a guy by the name of Harold, was scheduled to visit the store. And Richard thought if he could impress Harold on this particular store visit, maybe they would give him some time to improve his sales. So this day uh, comes and Harold shows up and they have donuts and coffee and everybody hangs out. And now it's 10 a.m. and they open the doors to the store and a very well-dressed gentleman walks in and announces that he wants to buy an entire wardrobe of clothing. And as it turned out, Richard was the first salesman in that morning, so he got to help that customer and he proceeded 
to sell that man a lot of merchandise. He sold that man a suit, a sport coat, shirt, slacks, ties, belt, underwear, pocket square. It came to $1,100. Now $1,100, and this goes back a long time because as he's telling me this on the sales floor at Lens Crafters, gosh, this is about, about 23 years ago and it had happened to him many years earlier. So today's equivalent would probably be about $5,000. So this is like a $5,000 sale, right? And he has this great sale, $1,100 back then. Um, rings the customer up, sends him on his way. And now Richard is standing in that men's clothing store waiting for Harold to come over and congratulate him. But Harold doesn't say anything. Harold doesn't run over and congratulate him. But finally, they get in a conversation and Harold finally says to Richard, that was a nice sale, kid. And Richard's like, yeah, did you see that? $1,100. And then Harold said, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Do you mind if I ask you a question? And Richard's thinking, kind of weird, but sure, ask me the question. He says, Richard, um, that was a great sale. Out of curiosity, I um, just want to know, what did that customer say no to? And Richard's thinking about this great sale, $1,100, the customer bought a suit and sport coat. And so he proceeds to tell Harold, he says, Harold, did you not see that sale? The customer bought a suit, sport coat, shirt, slacks, tie, belt. And Harold said, Richard, yes, I did. It was actually a great sale. Um, but I will tell you, yes is the easy part. All we have to do is look at the sales check and we can see you know, all the yeses. I'm just curious, what did that customer say no to? So Richard had to get honest. That's number two on our list. He had to get honest and he had to admit, he had to re come to the conclusion really that that customer hadn't said no to anything. Everything he laid in front of that man, that man purchased. And then Harold asked Richard the really important question after Richard admitted, Harold, that customer didn't say no to anything. Everything I laid in front of that man, he purchased. And then Harold asked him the really important question. He said, then how did you know he was done? And that was an even worse question because how did I know he was done? Richard had to admit that he had no idea that the customer was done. That man had hit over a thousand dollars in merchandise. When anybody got to his mental spending limit, they were done. He would ring the customer up, send them on their way. They were done. So Richard had to admit, he said, Harold, I don't know. I guess I just figured he was done. And then Harold said, you know, I watched you sell and you're not half bad, but your fear of the word no is going to kill you. I think if you could just learn to get over that, that you could be one of the great ones. And Richard went home that night, as he likes to say, two letters from greatness. And the letters were N-O, no. He didn't know if he had what it took to be successful and get yeses, but he knew he had what it took to fail. He could show more products and services. He could hear no more often. And so he went back in the next day, and that's exactly what he did. He started to do what Harold advised him, which was to go for no. Stop fearing the word no. Be willing to hear no from your clients, your customers, your prospects. And then when you do that, that's where the yeses will be found. So as Richard is telling me this, this story on the sales floor at Lens Crafters, I have an epiphany because I am completely different from him. I wasn't failing. I wasn't struggling. I was a superstar salesperson. Um, customers loved me. I was so good. I, I could look at somebody across the room and I would know exactly what kind of glasses to fit them with. Um, I was a complete expert. And then I had to get honest. That, there's that honest word again. I had to get honest and say, wait a minute. I don't like hearing the word no either. And my results could be better if I didn't let the fear of that no and that fear of that rejection hold me back. So I had to admit, sometimes I'll get that yes, and then I won't ask for anything else because I don't wanna look pushy, I don't wanna look aggressive, I don't, I don't wanna lose the yes. And so I would hold back and just stay quiet. 
instead of asking good questions, making recommendations and letting the customer be the one to tell me no. And for me to put that rejection on my shoulders rather than making a decision for them, what products and services I thought that they should hear about. And I did it all in the name of great customer service. I'm going to save you from having to tell me no by not letting you know what products you might be interested in. Well, there's no great customer service in that. That's just protecting myself against rejection. So I did get honest and I fell completely in love with the idea of go for no, the idea that you can ask questions and ask people and they will tell you yes, they will tell you no. And that the more times that you ask people questions and collect those decisions, the higher level of service that you are providing them while simultaneously putting yourself in a position to hear more no's, which I know we don't like, but simultaneously putting yourself in a position to hear more yeses. And so I did that. I did that on the at Lens Crafters. I got fantastic results. We trained my team with go for no. We got great results. And then finally, one day Richard comes to me and he says, I think we should launch our own speaking and training company. We should go out and we should teach the, the philosophies that we believe in, the sales and service and management philosophies, including go for no. And I said, yes, absolutely. That sounds like a great idea. I'm going to quit my dream job and go with you and teach this concept um, because I believe in it. And that's exactly what we did. And now I had no idea what I was doing and I had to cold call companies and I had to use go for no all over again. Reach out to people who had no idea who we were ask if we could send them information and see if we if they would hire us to come in and speak for their company. So I was just applying go for no instead of in the B2C world, I was now applying it in the B2B world. The reality is, is that go for no is a strategy of asking. No matter what business you are in, you're always going to come face to face with a go for no moment. That is the moment where you have to ask your customer to buy or ask them a question or ask if they're open to giving you referrals or if there's somebody they know who could also use your service, right? There's all those go for no moments that we see all day long, every day. The problem is that a lot of times we talk ourselves out of those go for no moments because we're afraid of what will happen if we hear that word no. And so the next thing I want to teach you is the underlying philosophy. Go for no is the strategy, the underlying philosophy, the underlying principle for how go for no works because it's based on a timeless truth. And the truth is this. We have all been taught and trained by well-meaning parents, teachers, society for years. And by the way, this is a worldwide phenomenon. This is not just in the United States. This is worldwide because I hear from people in literally every country that this is the case. We're all taught that the model for failure and success looks like this. We're in the middle failure, rejection, hearing the word no is on one side, success, getting the yeses, achieving everything we want is on the other side. And it is our mission to do everything within our power to avoid rejection. Avoid hearing those no's. Don't, don't get those no's. And to move toward success, to move toward the yeses. That's what we want to do. But there's actually a new model, a much more effective model. And that is where we are on one side. Failure, rejection, hearing the word no is in the middle. And the success that we're seeking, those yeses are on the other side. Harold told Richard that day, you know, when he said, you're not half bad, I think your fear of the word no is going to kill you. If you could just learn to get over that, I think you could be one of the great ones. He was really telling him about this model, about the idea that where you are on one side, those failures and rejections, you can't avoid them. You move through them. And the more no's that you bring into your life, when you are asking people and you are executing on those go for no moments on those products and services that could be applicable, that could serve your clients and prospects, when you do that, 
and you collect more no's, you will also simultaneously collect more yeses. It's a timeless truth. It's a principle. So this model of failure and success underlies the entire go for no strategy. The choice is never success or failure. It's success and failure. The choice isn't, should I go for yes today or should I go for no? The reality is, the choice is go for no. And in the process, you will get all of the yeses you are seeking. Now, am I saying you should you should make it difficult? Do you sabotage? And like if somebody calls you up and says, yeah, I'm ready to buy and you hang up on them? No, of course not. <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, but the whole idea here is that we don't expect a no. We're not hoping and wishing and praying to get rejected and that somebody says no to us but we accept no's as part of the process. We're not in avoidance mode. We're not in, I'm gonna make an assumption. I'm gonna decide what somebody is gonna do. I think they're gonna say no to me, so I won't ask, right? All of that protective mode that we get into. We understand that yes and no are opposite sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. If you want to avoid success, then by all means, avoid opportunities to fail. If you want to stop getting a lot of yeses and you want to get low hanging fruit and easy yeses, then by all means, don't ever go after big opportunities. Try not to ever hear the word no. Protect yourself at all costs. And then you'll have a struggling, mediocre, stress-filled business. And I see this day in and day out. People who are scared to reach out, they have anxiety, they have call reluctance, they don't want to prospect, they don't want to send that email, send that text, pick up the phone because rejection is incredibly powerful. We as humans are wired to not get rejected. It is built into our DNA. Do not get rejected. Your brain, when you get rejected, goes on high alert. You know what your brain says to you? You get rejected like that, you get a couple no's, you're gonna be living under the freeway overpass. Tomorrow, that's what your brain says because your brain is very good at awfulizing, at catastrophizing. So what we have to do is we have to work on shutting that down a little bit and understanding that that's how our brain was before, right? Before, very dangerous to get thrown out of the tribe, kicked out of the herd, left to forage and hunt on our own. Could you imagine? So of course, rejection is bad. But in today's world, rejection Top performing companies, top performing individuals, top performing businesses understand that go for no is part of the process. And so they use it to their advantage. Your NQ is more important than your IQ. Your no quotient is the number of times you are willing to hear no and keep going. In fact, we actually have a quiz on our website at gofornow.com. If you want to take it, don't take it now. But at gofornow.com, we have a 20 question assessment that you can take to find out what your no quotient is. Just like IQ, right? Stands for intelligence quotient. Who cares what your intelligence quotient is? That does not matter in the world of business, in the world of success. What matters is that when you hear the word no, you don't give up. Top performers look at hearing no as part of the process. They see it as the beginning, not the end. So now that I've laid a lot of foundation for you about what the go for no strategy is, I want to give you some more, some more strategies that you can implement in your business, things to think about, new ideas, so that you can implement go for no in your business, fold it in, use the concepts, and go out there and have no, no longer hold you back from executing on those go for no moments. So here's one of the big ones. This is something that we call no goals. Having yes goals is important. Having no goals is critical. Now, I know that if you're watching this, I know that you are a good goal setter because you wouldn't even be in 
a program like this. You wouldn't even be wasting your time watching me if you weren't somebody who's interested in achieving your goals. So you probably set traditional yes goals like we all do. Uh, when Richard and I, when he decided that he would approach me and we launched our company, we did. And as I said, I had no idea what I was doing, um, which is a whole other story. But one of the things that we came up with was we said, you know, let's uh, let's have a goal of four yeses a month. If we can get four people to say yes to us a month, four speaking engagements, four training opportunities, four dates every month, then we would be where we wanted to be financially. And of course, we were setting our own quota. So it was interesting that we weren't we weren't swinging for the fences by any means. We were like, what's the minimum that we need to do to survive? So we came up with this quota, our own quota of four. And so sometimes, you know, we would send out packages and we would call and uh, we would email and we would get somebody who was like, yeah, you know, send me some more information. So we'd send that off snail mail back then, actually. We'd send that off. And sometimes we would get lucky. And in the very first couple weeks of that month, we would get the four yeses we needed. We, we got our yes goal. And what do you think that we did once we hit our yes goal? We were done. We would be like, oh, this is great. We got our yes goal. We're comfortable now. Let's relax. We don't have to worry. We'll worry about the four yeses for next month, next month, right? And then we said, wait a minute, we're starting to see, we're really teaching go for no, like let's put this to the test. And we said, what if we got 100 companies to say no to us each month? What would happen to our business? What would happen to our results if we started hearing 100, getting 100 no's? So we changed everything. We said, let's not worry about the yes goal. Fine, the yes goal is four, that's great. Let's focus on the behaviors necessary, which we knew were reaching out to businesses that could hire us, finding out if they hired speakers, right? Qualifying them, sending them information and following up. Those were our success behaviors. You probably have something very similar to just those three or four very core, simple behaviors. And we said, if we just focused on those behaviors and let's try to hear 100 no's, we'll have more yeses than we know what to do with. And that is exactly what happened. Now, most of the time, it was actually really hard to get to those 100 no's. I, I don't believe we ever did. We would be at like 67 no's and we'd have all the yeses we needed plus more and no bandwidth to do any more delivery. Richard would say, we literally have to stop because it was just the two of us. And we said, we can't do any more. So we, we blew through that yes goal. And that's what's so powerful about having no goals is that yes goals tend to limit our performance, but no goals because you're focused on the behavior of asking. In other words, you're looking for those go for no moments and you're asking in that moment, hey, would you be open to taking a look at this? Hey, would you be open to having a, a quick meeting on Zoom so I can share with you this, uh, my business? Or calling somebody and saying, hey, this is the product we, we provide. This is the service we provide. Are you interested in something like this right now? Right? That's just a simple yes, no, go for no moment question. And when you focus on those behaviors and executing those simple behaviors often enough, the yeses will come. They always do. So funny story. One of our very, very good friends, Mike, when we lived up in the Pacific Northwest, called me one Friday afternoon and he said, Andrea, I have a, a funny story to tell you and I don't know how to feel about it. I set a no goal this week of getting 10 no's. Here it is Friday afternoon. I had nine. I decided that I would call on a guy who's been putting me off and putting me off saying yes. And I thought if I just call him right now, here it is Friday, he's probably going to put me off again because he has been now for a couple of months. So I'll just just give this guy a call, check in, touch, touch base, see how he's doing, get my no, and then I'll collect 10 no's and I will hit my no goal for the week. And then I can celebrate hitting my no goal because it really shows that 
I was in action and, and I was doing the activity. He said, so I called this guy. He answers and he says, Mike, so great to hear from you uh, because I was actually, I've been thinking about calling you. We're a, we're a go. Let's go ahead and, and sign me up for this thing. And Mike said, he ended up being a yes. I don't know how to feel about it. Should I be upset that I didn't hit my no goal, but I'm really excited that I got my yes. Yes is the destination, make no mistake, but no is how you get there. We don't expect no, we don't go into situations with low energy, no energy. We can go in with yes energy, but we accept them when they happen. And so that was Mike's attitude. Hey, I'm just gonna call this guy, check in with him, right? Have Keep that relationship open and see what he says. And if he says no, great. If he says yes, great. And that really is the power of no goals. It helps us stay engaged with those behaviors, but also detach from that, those emotional reactions that we tend to have. Which brings me to the next go for no concept, and that is to get off the yes, no emotional roller coaster as entrepreneurs especially as entrepreneurs. Now we're all, as I said, we're hardwired in our DNA to not be rejected. But as entrepreneurs, this is so the case because a lot of times we are selling products that we've created, services that are based on our skills, our knowledge. And so it becomes very personal. And when we get those yeses, we tend to celebrate, right? We get those noes, we're really deflated. And sometimes we really take it personally. like. What does it say about me? What does it say about my value? And when we get that no, it's interesting because our brain is always trying to interpret things. Our brain is an interpretation machine. It sees people and signals and colors and everything. And you know what your brain is always filtering? It's always saying, what does this mean? What does this mean? So when you get that rejection, oftentimes your brain will say, well, what does this mean? And remember what I said, your brain says, it means you're going to die. It's really bad. Like, don't let this happen again because your brain is catastrophizing. So we've got to shut that crazy brain down from those emotional reactions. And one of the most powerful ways that you do that is to step off that emotional roller coaster. So it's when you get that no to say, instead of, oh, wow, I, I did something wrong. I'm terrible. I'm horrible. I, I, you know, I, I'm going to beat myself up. What do, I don't have what it takes. This isn't going to work. You know, all those negative things that are the knee jerk reactions. You have to stop saying those things because if the model that I shared with you a few minutes ago is true, and it is that failure success model, then when you get rejected, when you get those no's, it's merely part of the process. You didn't do anything wrong. That's what everybody does. That's what everybody's going through. So why are all of a sudden, why is your rejection all of a sudden wrong or bad? No, you're on the complete right path. That's why that model is so, so important. And then when you get a yes, I know we love to celebrate and we want to high five and yeses pay the bills and yeses are everything. But let's not make yeses so important Let's really focus on our activity. Let's focus on really selling courageously, which by the way, um, and I, I don't have it. I, I, I love sharing this and I don't put it um, on my slides because I never know when it's gonna come out, but I wanna make sure that I leave you with this definition of selling courageously and for me. And that is that selling courageously means that you care more about telling somebody about how you can help them solve their problem than you do about getting a no. You care more about helping somebody solve their problem using your product, your service, whatever your idea, than you do about hearing the word no. That is what it means to sell courageously. And yet we struggle because logically we get it. We go like, ah, oh, we know, I know it's a numbers game. I just need to talk to more people. I need to send more things out. I, I need to get more eyes on my offer. But then emotionally, I get it, but I'm still struggling and I see this a lot. And so that getting off that emotional roller coaster is so important. One of the ways that you do that 
is to equalize out your emotional reaction. Again, it should be of equal emotional intensity. So those negative reactions to no, you got to tamp those down. The super positive reactions to yes, you got to tamp those down. And remember this super powerful mantra. We did not create this. We got this from Jack Canfield. And the mantra is some will, some won't. You probably, a lot of you probably know this. So what? And someone's waiting. After a few years of being in our business and uh, I finally got the hang of cold calling, uh, it was not difficult. I stumbled my way through it. I said really stupid, ridiculous things to people on the phone <laughs> um, because I wasn't smooth until I got smoother and I got my confidence up and I got better. We get better as we do things, right? Got better. And uh, over the years it started, I, I just became you know pretty good at it. Um, I was always still working on the emotional part because that idea of taking no personally is for me, probably the most difficult. And it's, I think it's probably one of the most difficult things. But I was working on that. Now, in the meantime, we found ourselves in a position where we were delivering on our services. And a lot of you can probably relate, right? You sell, 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 and then you have to deliver, 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 right? You have to, if you're not building it or making it yourself, you have to make sure that it's getting shipped there. You have to make sure people are happy. You wanna follow up after the sale. So there's all of that stuff around, just get around the sale, really. And so what happened to my pipeline was, it kind of dried up a little bit. Let's just put it that way. In fact, it, I had let it dry up so much that I realized that I had one really truly qualified viable prospect and I really needed this business to close. So I called this woman, I'll never forget what her name is, Diane. I called Diane and I left her a message and we eventually hooked back up and we had a, a phone meeting and she said, yes, I, I got my yes. I, and I admit I fell into my old trap because I hadn't been going for no, I hadn't been doing the behaviors, but I got my yes, so I was excited. And uh, so feeling kind of desperate, never, never a good place to be. That's where a lot of people get when they're afraid to go out and go for no. So they wind up in these places of desperation and then they become desperate for the yes. Well, guess what? I was exactly right there because I hadn't been prospecting. I hadn't been filling my pipeline because I was just busy and I was ready to take a break. Right. Uh, and I admit, I think I was by that time feeling a little entitled. So Diane says yes. And we go great. And a good friend of ours was in from out of town. We ended up going out to lunch, kind of celebrated our yes, bought lunch, came home, and this was in the days where they have the where we had the physical answering machine. So this goes back a while. When we got back, the answering machine light was flashing. And I don't know how some of you are, but sometimes there's just this overwhelming intuition that you have about certain things, right? I saw the light flashing and I just thought, that's Diane and this is not good. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. We listened to the voicemail and she said, Andrea, it's Diane. I'm really sorry. I just got out of my VP of sales office. Um, we're kind of cleaning house here. We're not doing any training. He's pulled the plug. So I know you sent, you're going to send me the contract, but you know, don't bother sending it because we're not going to be able to move forward. So now I'm there with nothing and I'm freaking out, which is the last place that you want to be. So I had to get back into gear, get back into doing what I knew worked, which is executing on my go for no behaviors, going out there, building my relationships, following up with people, sending packages, right? Not just relying on my easy yeses to come in, which is kind of what I had been doing. And that's really the power of the pipeline. When you are working in your business, in any business, and you are consistently reaching out to people, and you're able to do so because you're feeling good about no, and in the back of your mind, you think, hey, I'm just going to go for no, I'm just going to go for no, you will execute 
on those go for no moments so much more often because you won't talk yourself out of them and then end up in a situation like I ended up in where I had to then scramble. So it was a really hard, important lesson that I, that I had to learn to never let that happen again. So another core go for no concept, every no has hidden value. And it has really two, there's two aspects to this idea of hidden value. And it's in that word, no. A good friend of ours named Lisa Jimenez, she wrote the book, uh, Conquer Fear. She used to tell us the story, she told us the story of how she figured out literally the value of a no in her business. She realized that every time she picked up the phone and made her presentation, made her ask, that it was worth $50 to her. And so she started literally thinking in her mind every time she made her presentation and the person said, no, thanks. She would hang up the phone and say, thanks for the $50. Because every action, every activity that you engage in, when you compare all of those no's and then the yes, those no's, those behaviors, those actions, those activities all had value. They have some value. There is some hidden value there. Now, the other piece to this is that there's the no factor, K-N-O-W, go for no, meaning go for no to get to know people. There is nothing more powerful than showing up consistently for people and them seeing that you are there. That's what builds trust right? The person that just comes and does the quick ask one time, and then you never hear from them again, you never see them again. That's no, that's not go for K-N-O-W. They asked, you said no, they're gone. But when you combine go for no with getting to know people and building those relationships and having real estate in people's minds, so that when they're finally ready to say yes, it may be six months from now, it may be three years from now, but when they're finally ready to say yes, they think of you because you do have that little real estate in their mind. You have been getting to know them over the years by communicating and sending them things and staying in contact. So every no has hidden value. Even when people say no to you, it's got the monetary value and it's got the trust factor. Because you may think, oh, they said no, so we're not going to do business. You're not going to do business today. But you may very well do business and a lot of business in the future. So be patient. Stay positively persistent, positively and politely persistent, and hang in there because those no's have value. And that brings me to. Um, to persistence. No rarely means never. No means not yet. I want to share some persistence statistics with you. Uh, these are based on a, a research project that was done quite some time ago. Subsequent research projects have been done by a couple different organizations, and they're all very similar. But the point is, persistence is key. Persistence builds trust. Persistence builds rapport. You just have to get permission. And as long as you have permission to stay engaged with people and you are offering them value and you are creating that value, people will be glad to hear from you. And it really does help build that relationship. But here's the here are these very cool um, persistent statistics. So this research project found that 44% of people give up after getting one no. They found that 22% more give up after getting a second no. They found that after the third no, 14% more give up, right? They hear that no, they give up, they're done. 12% more give up after the fourth no. But here's the crazy thing. So you add those together, you get 92%, but here's the challenge. 60% of all prospects say no four times before finally saying yes. So how do you hang in there how do you stay engaged with people in that process? And the idea behind it, of course, is persistence, is hang in there while people take time to make their decision. They're often nervous about making that change. 
Um, they don't want to make the wrong decision. They're doing their research on and on, right? There's all kinds of reasons behind that. But as professionals, when we stay with people and they finally say yes, when we hang in there, we are often rewarded with that business. There's a reason why they say fortune is in the follow-up because nobody follows up, right? Nobody likes to do that. So a huge part of go for no is to go back. And I would encourage you to go back in your contacts and say, who have I just kind of given up on? Who have I made assumptions that they ghosted me? You don't know that. That's just an assumption. Or they this or they that. Go back and start rebuilding those relationships. Follow back up. Say, hey, I dropped the ball. How are you doing? And rekindle that. Start it again. It's a great way to start collecting your no's and start going for no and, and, and setting those, those no goals. Uh, a few years ago, we made a movie. Um, and it was a movie where we interviewed 58 top achievers in the um, personal development, sales. We, we interviewed all kinds of people in, in every business and in every industry. And as we were, and we drove, Richard and I drove um, 11,737 miles together in one car. <laughs> and no, we didn't kill each other. Um, and we had this amazing trip. And as we were pulling into the Hotel Santa Barbara, we pulled in, we had our little flip cameras. This is about 10 years ago. Um, and we were interviewing Jack Canfield in Santa Barbara at his house. He is the author of The Success Principles and Chicken Soup for the Soul. Amazing, amazing guy. As we were getting our equipment out, the valet asked us what we were doing, and we explained that we were making this go-for-no little documentary. Um, it's kind of like The Secret, but on a really, really low budget. Okay, seriously low budget. And he said, wow, that's really cool. Um, so what have you guys learned? You know, interviewing all these people, we explained that we interviewed them on their, their failures, their rejections, um, their philosophies around hearing the word no. What have you learned? And we tried to distill it down into one sentence. And of course, I relied on my brilliant creative husband, Richard, to come up with something. I'm like, I don't know, what have, what have we learned? There's too much. We have, like, we have like hundreds of hours of footage. And Richard said, well, we basically learned this. When average performers hear the word no, they think the process is over. When top performers hear no, they think things are just getting started. And that really is how it goes with go for no, that you think that the process is over. You think that the word no means that it's the end. And it's just not. Oftentimes we take no personally because we're too busy thinking about ourselves. We're too busy thinking about what's going on with us and, and that this person is rejecting us. And the reality is that other people have their own issues and problems and, and beliefs. And when they say no to you, that literally has nothing to do with you, even if it's about you. And that's the thing I learned finally by reading a book called The Four Agreements. I learned that and embraced that. So if you ever take no personally, just remember, it is not about you, even when it's about you. It's about what's going on for the other person. So when we give people the grace to tell us no, when we give people the, um, uh, the ability to tell us no, we receive that no positively with enthusiasm. And we understand that no doesn't mean never. No often means not yet. Amazing, amazing things can happen. I have to just tell you one last story. When we launched our business, and I mentioned repeatedly that I had no idea what I was doing, one of the things that we decided to do was we went to uh, San Francisco. We lived in Los Angeles at the time. We went to San Francisco for a conference and it was a conference, it was called ASTD. It was, it, that stood for the American Society of Training and Development. And we knew that some of our prospects would be there. 
this was going to be a great way to get business, but money was really tight. And you all know San Francisco, super expensive, expensive hotel, expensive meals, expensive. Um, the, the conference itself, the tickets were expensive, but then we said, well, no, this is going to be worth it, right? So we bought the tickets to the ASTD conference. And as it turned out, luckily, there was a networking meeting. And we knew that some of our potential prospects would be there, people who could hire us. So we went to this networking meeting. And at the time, I was carrying around a little book. It was not Go For No. It was a little book that we had written before Go For No called Unlocking the Secrets of Retail Magic. It was even shorter than Go For No, which is short, by the way. <laughs> this little book was 64 pages. And uh, we, we walked through the ballroom, we're walking around and I'm looking at name badges, right? Trying to see people. And I see this woman across the room. Her name is Deborah Mastin and she's with JCPenney. She's like a vice president or something. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And I think two things simultaneously, they pop into my head. And the one I thought was, you have to go walk up and talk to her. And the second thing was, Whatever you do, don't go approach her. You're just going to make a fool out of yourself, right? But then I thought about the money that we had spent to be there and the fact that this was it. I mean, we really needed this. We had been in business a couple months. We had still not gotten one client. So we needed this. So I walked up with a pretty lame approach. I just introduced myself, said, hi, Deborah." I really pretty much felt like I was about seven years old. Um, very awkward, like the whole thing, just awkward. Walked up to her. Hi, Deborah. My name's Andrea Waltz. Um, I have this training company. <laughs> and here's a book I wrote, um, like a child sent, giving an adult their project. She was really cool. She, um, oh, by the way, she was uh, about five feet tall. But at the time she felt like she was six and a half feet tall. So I'm looking down at her, but I feel like she is a giant. That's how inadequate in status I felt, how nervous I was. But she was nice. She said, oh, good to meet you. I handed her a copy of our book. I said, hey, uh, we recently published this book. It's got a lot of the philosophies that we believe uh, might be something, uh, you know, yours, um, feel free to take it. And she was being a good executive. Uh, she took the book and she, flipped through it. And I learned a really important lesson right at this moment too. I just closed my mouth. I just, I, I was silent. I didn't try to talk over her. I didn't try to explain things. I just, just stood silent. And she said to me, this looks really interesting. Well, here's my card. And, um, you know, uh, do you, and then she said, um, by the way, do you guys do distance learning? And I said, oh yeah, absolutely. We do distance learning. She goes, great. Call me on Monday. I think I, I would like to work with you guys. I think this could be really good. Now I'm freaking out. I'm so excited, right? I'm so excited about my yes. <laughs> and I'm running around the ballroom trying to find Richard and I find him, I corner, we get into the corner and I'm like, you're not gonna believe this. I, I just walked up to Deborah Mastin, vice president of sales uh, at JCPenney and, and I showed her our book and she, she thinks it's interesting and that we should do business together. And she asked me if we do distance learning and Richard goes, wait, wait, wait what's distance learning? And I said, oh, I have no idea, but we're going to figure that one out. So I, I had no idea. And we did. Um, she ended up hiring us. And distance learning is basically what we're doing now. This is distance learning. Didn't know that. At the time, um, this was before Zoom, of course. And they have big, giant, like, studio side. They have a huge studio in the basement of their, of their company where they broadcast to all the stores. That's what distance learning was. And what I realize now is that if I hadn't approached her on that day, I'm not sure our business would have succeeded. I mean, we didn't have a big runway. We kind of flew by the seat of our pants. We didn't have some safety net. We hadn't been like saving up for the last three years to finally leave and live the life of our dreams. I mean, we were kind of like, nope, let's go. And we're, we're definitely fly by the seat of our pants type people, super risk takers. So here I am. I mean, this really needed to work, but I had that go for no moment where I had to make the decision. Do I walk up to her, even though I, I'm not going to be perfect. I feel awkward. I feel like really a child. I don't feel prepared. Or do I leave and get on the airplane and wonder, I wonder what would have happened if I just walked up to Deborah Mastin and said hello. 
And so that's the power of go for no for you. It, remember that in those moments where you have the opportunity to ask, do it, to approach, do it, to send something, do it, to connect with someone, do it. Don't think, just do it, go for no. And that is the secret of getting everything that you want because that model that I showed you, the failures, the rejections, the feeling stupid, the, the falling on your face, all of that is in the middle and the yeses and the success you're seeking is on the other side. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the first Experts Unleashed. I was super honored to be a part of it and to share with you this message. And I hope that it helps your businesses, both professionally and also personally, because go for no is also a life philosophy. Oh, Joe. <laughs> I muted. That is terrible. Thank you so much, Andrea. I so appreciate you uh, being here today and and just just pouring your your valuable knowledge into our customer base. I know they appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, I took some notes, but because I was so engaged, I'm just going to have to go back and watch and really take notes uh, on the for the next time I watch it. Um, but I really love that selling courageously. That's an amazing statement that I've never heard. And, and that was absolutely phenomenal um, because that's truth, right? I mean, if you're, yeah. you're not really selling, you're just trying to give somebody a tool that they need to help them in their business. And I just loved all of it. I love the, uh, the persistence, uh, the no statistics, uh, the follow-up. I mean, rejection, that big, ugly word, like I'm going to get mm -hmm. rejected. No, don't do it. It'll hurt my heart. <laughs> I know, thing. I know. Yes, and it's so it's it, it and it and it does. But when you start going for no, that does that it it reduces. It really does. Yeah, and I think that's it, right? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, you just have yeah. to, so, as I say, step out of your comfort zone. Just yes. get out of that comfort zone just for a minute and see right. what happens. Test that's the awesome. waters. Stick your big yeah. toe, stick a foot in there, jump in the deep end like maybe you and I would do. It sounds like we're a little more on the crazy side. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> It is, but we're doing it. Yep. I got right. you. I'm like you. I'll figure it out. Definitely. Yeah. So awesome, Andrea. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, I want to make sure everybody knows that we have your book available, right? Yes. That's the deal. So, your, so your, your book is actually available uh, in the mailbox power system. And I wanted to show you that really quick. Uh, it is here. Um, and as you can see, yeah, our executives, $9.09, pro members, $9.74, and our light members pay retail at $12.99. So that is there. Uh, we did get a limited supply, Andrea, and I figure, I, well, I hope we don't run out. Uh, if we do, I know where to find some more books because I have this friend, her name's Andrea Wells. <laughs> she, he's an author. I'm the book right book. out to you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So anyway, um, folks, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for being here. Next week, uh, we will be having our Lunch and Learn and why celebrating birthdays is marketing magic. Uh, that will be next week. Again, folks, uh, thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, thank you uh, to our customer base for being here, giving us your time. We know it's your most valuable asset. Hope you got value from today and we'll see you next week. And thank you, Andrea. Appreciate it.